Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to welcome and introduce Alexis Sosinon, Global Head of People Analytics and Strategic Workforce Planning, Merck Group, for a case study presentation titled, How Organizations Can Leverage Advanced People Analytics, Machine Learning, and Artificial Intelligence to Drive True Business Value. Over to you, Alexis. Thank you very much, Ivan. And I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to share with you the journey that we have come uh, so far uh, at the Mer Group to try to really leverage people analytics, machine learning, and AI to its maximum impact and deliver true business value. During this session, I'll be sharing a few examples of how we have been trying to approach this particular topic. And I'll be very happy to welcome questions as soon as we are at the end of the presentation that I've prepared for you. Let me now share my screen and run you through what the journey was for the Merck Group so far. First of all, a few words about the Merck Group. Um, we are about 56,000 employees worldwide in 66 countries. We are a German headquartered company um, that is extremely old, as you can see. We, 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 we celebrated our 350th anniversary very uh, recently, uh, and we spent quite a bit of focus on, on developing R&D and innovation to support human progress and the society. I myself have a pretty strange profile, as I'm sometimes called. As you can see, I'm, I'm initially French. I've been living on all three continents, currently in Asia. I've been spending the last 10 years here in Asia. And I was not really meant to be part of HR initially because I graduated from corporate finance and organizational psychology. A true life number of work experiences brought me to this uh, responsibility that I have the pleasure to have today and that represent a true passion uh, for me and, and for us at the Merck Group. There are really three things that I would like to share with you as part of this topic that I have the pleasure to, to share with, the, with us today. today. The first one, when we talk about delivering true business value, I would like to share with you how my team and our organizational setup is made for that. And we've really evolved it over time in order to make sure that we can stay very focused on delivering this true business value. The second topic that I will share with you talks about people analytics as part of our DNA. It's really something that is extremely important for the Merck Group to make sure that we can use people analytics to its maximum in our day-to-day -day life. And I'll be sharing a little bit more how we do that, as well as some of the assets that we have developed in order to reach that particular objective. The third one, talking very much about the topic that we're here today, I'll share some examples about how we use analytics, AI, and machine learning at scale to deliver true business impact. As you can see here, the key word is really the scalability of our solution to make sure that we can deliver not only true business impact, but also scalable business impact. And that's what I will be sharing with you in the next few minutes. The first thing that I wanted to share with you talks about how we are organized as a particular uh, business. You see, in order to make sure that we can deliver true business value, we had to organize ourselves like a business. And this is maybe a little specificities that we have at Merck and within the team that I lead globally. As you can see, we are really organized like a business. We have a part of my team that is dedicated to research and development, scouting, analyzing the most innovative techniques on machine learning and AI that are out there on the market and identifying those that could deliver most impact to us versus those that we believe are not mature enough and that we should look out uh, maybe in the near future. And right next to that, another part of my team is really client facing and dedicated to talk with business leaders day in, day out, making sure that we can do a proper bridge between understanding these business specific situations that the business is having and understanding really how people analytics, machine learning and AI can help solve these particular business situations. And like any business, we are very, very driven by impact. As you can see, we have a set of dashboard KPIs that we measure on a regular basis and that we also 
report on to make sure that we are spending our resources and effort on the most impactful initiatives. So it's really about being set up like a business if you really want to enable true business value. The second element that I wanted to share with you is talking about people analytics being part of our DNA. As you can see at Merck, we have engaged onto this initiative for quite a number of years and we have been developing some very strategic assets to make sure that we can democratize data and make sure that data can be used across the whole employee life cycle in every single business decision as well as people decision. We have this little motto at Merck that is called no business plan without a people plan. And I think that nicely illustrates what I mean when I talk about making sure that we deliver true business impact. We ensure that we have the right data at stake and we continuously build that data set. Today it's about 350 million over data points and it's growing every day. Actually today it might have passed 200, 360,000 already um, additional data points. And we consolidated all of that onto one very user-centric global persistent platform so that the experience that we can deliver to all of our business leaders and HR leaders can be very consistent in the way we approach people analytics in our company. There is a very important point that I wanted to add here, and I'm sure all of you are very much talking about that in your respective companies, and that is the whole impact of ethics and privacy. At Merck, we take this extremely seriously, and we make sure that we shape the future together with our business leaders, employees, as well as works councils or unions, whenever that's relevant, to make sure that we never forget to balance the impact that we can have on the business while never crossing any lines and making sure that we stick to our very strong values on ethics and privacy. So far, it has really been one of the cornerstone of our success, and that's a very important driver that we are shaping further with the key stakeholders at Merck and outside Merck. The first example that I wanted to share with you about analytics at scale very much talks about future of work and I think is very relevant for, for today. This example actually looks at leveraging AI analytics and machine learning to understand through data and very specifically how specific jobs and work at Merck will be impacted. I think especially in the current context of this pandemic that we're unfortunately going through, this has really proven to be extremely impactful. More than ever now, we are able to understand which, how, the, how specific jobs, activities will be done differently, what are some possible jobs or tasks that might disappear because of additional AI or automation, as well as which jobs or tasks could be further augmented with specific AI and machine learning technologies. You can see here on this page, there are just a few examples of the constant analysis that we are doing across the entire Merck workforce. And that's something that we are currently reinforcing our focus on. Again, the idea is to be very clear and precise on which jobs, which activities, what are the opportunities, what are the risks in front of us in order to make sure that we can always have a workforce that will be as future ready as possible. And these types of activities very much shape the upskilling and reskilling strategy that the Merck group is having. I cannot disclose that amount, but I'm sure you would have all realized that such an approach at scale has already generated multi-millions of revenue and cost impact uh, and shaping the new ways of working at Merck. The other example that um, is something that we are also in the midst of rolling out looks at a particularly interesting approach called network analytics. I'm sure that a number of you are familiar with this technique. What we've done at Merck is we've really tried to see how this particular AI and machine learning approach can generate most value. And we've actually been applying it to a number of very base specific business discussion in the past and very recently some of you might have followed us uh, and saw that we made a major acquisition of a company called Versum uh, in the past couple of years and during one of these acquisitions we really used data analytics machine learning to identify 
the key business critical roles and key knowledge people that we wanted to secure as part of this integration by all means. Just by doing that, imagine the amount of business impact that you can deliver. For the first time, we were really able to understand and read a little bit more the organization that we are about to acquire and integrate, to really be able to avoid spending time trying to talk with multi-millions of people, but to reduce this number of discussion to a very targeted number based on data that we were able to put at hands of our business leaders. This technique is something that we are rolling out globally and we are actually even expanding further the number of use cases that we want to have through this particular approach. And I believe that is something that is extremely promising and will continue to deliver major impact for our businesses and for our people globally. The third and last example that I wanted to share with you today talks about using machine learning and AI to realize m &A value again, and especially here in a context of resourcing optimization. What we've realized is that more and more, like many companies, we operate under very constrained resources. People costs are increasing worldwide, and it's really about trying to understand how to best manage, allocate, and reallocate these resourcings that we have in this particular case on the commercial front to deliver the maximum business ROI. So what we have been doing with this particular technology called MIA, standing for My Intelligent Analytics, is to actually correlate on an ongoing basis, thanks to the machine and the algorithm that are behind, the performance on the sales side, on the customer side, together with the cost of the resources, the risks of attrition, as well as the opportunity to maximize different skill sets that we're standing among our workforce to position this particular skill set and resources in the right territory, in front of the right client and at the right time. So this is another example of how we have been able so far to leverage analytics, machine learning and AI at scale in order to deliver really true business impact and very quantifiable. I think this brings me to the end of my sharing and I'm happy to welcome any question. Some learnings from our journey, this journey is far from being over and I'm sure that a number of you are on maybe similar journeys, but I think there are really five learnings that I wanted to share with you to engage into such a journey. First of all, I call it get your foundation right or you will suffer. And I really mean it. Before being able to deliver people analytics, machine learning, AI, and AI, sorry, to deliver true business impact, you have to build very robust and strategic assets to leverage. Trying to engage and solving different problems on a very fragmented manner will only bring you to a certain level. Having very strong foundation is something that will really help you to deliver the maximum amount of value. That is really something that um, we have seen for a while, right? Always having to balance, let's say, these opportunities to build or buy some specific technologies or, or use cases that were uh, available on the market versus trying to have a much more future-oriented approach to have a look at what is the target architecture of data, of technologies, that we want to have. Really making sure that we can always balance these buy, build scenarios and have this strong foundational mindset always at the core of the discussion in order to generate success over the long term. The second big learning is around sponsorship. And I think here I can really talk from experience and I'm very happy to, to welcome any question or any thoughts that you might be having as well. But being able to deliver true business impact through people analytics, AI, and machine learning is simply not possible without having the right level of business and leadership sponsorship in the organization. That's really something that we have put a lot of effort on at Merck in the last few years to make sure that we could get that level of sponsorship from the very top of the organization. Today at Merck, our group CEO, 
Stefan Oshman himself is actually our very first big advocate. Our CHRO has put people analytics at the core of our multi-year global HR strategy. And then making sure that we are using these network of influencers to spread the word across the business to understand, for the leaders to understand what's in it for them and to be able to touch and see how people analytics can deliver business value to them. It's really something that we are not trying to do from a theoretical basis, but something that we are trying to do by showing impact, building credentials, building storylines, making it known across the organization, leveraging best practices across the organization to replicate what really works. The third thing that I wanted to share is about involving customers and partners throughout the journey. I don't know if you have noticed that when I was sharing a little bit about our setup, but one of the things that is extremely important for us at Merck is to be able to leverage the whole ecosystem within Merck as well as outside Merck to make the most in terms of impact. And here, <clears throat> my team, when you really think about it, it's pretty small, right? I'm talking about 10 to 12 people for 56,000 people, which is much less compared to a large number of other companies. However, this approach, sizing and focus is very much here by design. We want to make sure that we leverage all of our existing internal networks, for example, our data science network, our business analytics networks, our innovation centers to partner <clears throat> on different initiatives and make sure that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Sometimes some ideas, some technologies might be out there and could directly benefit a particular situation that we are looking at. And the same holds true for the other side. Some of the ideas or pilots that we might be thinking about are actually possibly uh, integrated in some of the discussion that the business is having, and even sometimes for a, part, a totally part, different purpose. You'd we'll be very surprised, and I was very surprised myself, to see the value that these connections can bring. The other part of the ecosystem really talks about external. And here I'm talking about being integrated with different hubs known for advancements in AI, machine learning, and analytics globally and always be very connected with the different hubs of other companies, of startups, of research institutes, of universities, in order to make the most out of this collaboration. And that is one of the reasons, for example, why we have been very clear since the beginning that despite us being a global team and a global central team, we want to be spread out from a geographical perspective globally. And today, some of my team members are, of course, based in our headquarters in Germany, but other part of my team members are based in the US. Some of my team members are based in Asia and China. I myself am based in Singapore. And with that, we can always ensure that we are not only always close to our customers and the business, but that we are also always very close to what's happening in the external ecosystem globally and that we are able to make the most out of everything that might be invented or piloted, piloted excuse me, across all the continents. The fourth one, talking about prioritization based on ROI. That might be a question that you are asking yourself today. How should we prioritize our book of work or, or let's say our pipeline of all the demands that we might be having coming from the business or from the HR organization. In order to address that question, as I mentioned earlier, we've really set ourselves up like a business. And today we have a very robust portfolio prioritization approach where we actually assess all of the different demands or opportunities that are coming up from respective parts of the business or the geographies or the organization and really sit down and assess these opportunities with these stakeholders before engaging the very first hour of effort 
into that work. And we are typically assessing business impact, revenue quantification or cost optimization quantification. We are assessing criteria like risks from all different fronts, right? Talking from technical risk to data privacy risk and all of these different aspects that we pay a lot of attention to. And the third dimension that we also assess all the time is reusability. We wanna make sure that whatever we are working on or developing a particular algorithm or looking at a particular use case is something that can be reused. And we have this sort of additional expression within the Mer group, that is to say, we have a data science strategy around building reusable assets. We actually look at each use case or each practical application as a set of sub pieces of, of code, for example, or, or particular mindset in the way that we approach the problem. And we always try to break that down and make the very most of it to understand how much of a particular application can be relevant for other use cases. And that enables us to have a long-term focus and prioritize all of the different demands or opportunities that are coming our way. The very last learning that I wanted to share with you before we can maybe open up for a few questions if you would like to, is around planning for people analytics and impact at scale. I know that I repeated that quite a, a number of times during this presentation, but for me and for us, this is really the key. Delivering again a few very nice and innovative or shiny use cases here and there in the organization and, and, and many times actually getting very nice results out of it is one approach. But as I said earlier, not having in mind the end game or the end outcome of what you are really trying to do with it is something that will only bring you that far. If you really want to be able to successfully move on to your next, next step of maturity towards people analytics and uh, machine learning and AI, we very, very strongly believe that that notion of scale should become central as part of any discussion that you're having. And that is what we are very much focusing on in order to deliver our true business impact and continue to shape the future of the Merck Group. Thank you very much and happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, Alexis. That was really an insightful case study presentation. Yes, uh, we have a couple of questions that have come in from uh, the members of the audience. Uh, the first one being, can you please share a story of how predictive data inferences helped you to make an impact on people's strategy? Absolutely. I could actually share many of them. Um, let me maybe share one particular example. We have been developing, and we are currently further expanding it, we have been developing a model that looks at predicting flight risk, so risk of attrition, as well as performance of particular business critical positions or top talents. So today we are able to better understand to a pretty interesting level of granularity what is the risk that is in front of us for certain key talents or business critical role that either we have already invested hundreds of thousands of euros, dollars, or even millions sometimes into, and that you know, might not provide the return that are there. And much more importantly than predicting risk or, or, or performance, we are looking at understanding the drivers, the why, and really making sure that the insights can be as actionable as possible in order to develop the right people's strategic actions out of it. Thank you so much. Uh, another question for you, Alexis. Is it possible to share a few specific data points that you collected to find key influencers in the organization? Yes, I'm happy to do that. Um, and that is something that, of course, is an ongoing exercise at Merck. One of the things that we have already been, been putting together, um, which actually came up as a pretty breakthrough 
approach was the ability to better understand the skills and the knowledge that a number of our people were having internally through external patterns. I know it can sound surprising, but actually we realized that external patent and literature available largely publicly gives you a huge and wealth of information to better understand your workforce, your networks, who is an expert in what, who is an influencer in particular topic, very practically. So that's a first example of what we have been using in order to build uh, these particular networks. Another element that we are currently looking at is to try and make the most of the employee profiles that we have at Merck. Employee profiles, like I'm sure in many of your companies, are here to provide some level of information about each and every employee, not only about their CV uh, and experiences, but also about the projects and the topics that they have been working on. So what we've actually been doing is to leverage a pretty advanced uh, machine learning algorithm largely around natural language processing to better understand and cluster that huge amount of unstructured information into insights that can be used and practically being able to connect the key topics or the keywords or the key projects that overlap with each other in order to build, again, a strong network of knowledge or influences. This would be two examples of that. Okay. Uh, we'll take one last question, uh, Alexis. While insights are great, what are the top things to do to make sure that the organization in whole is ready to adopt such a system? That's a very good question. I think a few things are naturally coming to my mind. The first one is a repeat from what I said earlier, and I insist on that, and that is the level of sponsorship. And this sponsorship has to come from the very top of the organization. If you don't have the right people ranging from your executive board, your CEOs, your management teams totally behind these types of application, it's gonna be much harder to impact the whole of the organization, as you said, Ivan. That's one thing. The other thing that naturally comes to my mind is to show impact and value delivered to a business leader and make sure that this business leader uses his networks and word of mouth to make it known. And as busy are as, as busy as, as busy are as business leaders, like in many other companies, trust me, if you are able to bring an immediate value add to them that they can pick adjust and directly get going and that deliver short to midterm impact, it's going to work. This could be a couple of examples that I'm thinking of, Ivan. Okay, great. Thank you so much, uh, Alexis, for your insights. Once again, thank you for taking time off and joining us on this summit. Uh, have a good day. Thank you. We now move on, ladies and gentlemen, to the next poll question. To view the poll question, you will have to minimize your player, and the poll question will appear on the right of your screen. Also, do not forget to tweet using the hashtag ET Workforce Summit. So there's the question for you. What kind of a job would people employees want to do in the era of automation and the options being one that pays well, one that makes a difference, one that is easy, comfortable, none of these. You have 60 seconds to choose your option. Your time starts now.
and the results have come in. What kind of a job would people, employees want to do in the era of automation? An overwhelming 71% of you think that it's option B, one that makes a difference. 24% of you say one that pays well. And 6% say one that is easy, comfortable. None for option D. Thank you for participating in the poll. Remember, we will have poll questions at various points during the day. So do participate and make this experience enriching for you and for us. Also a reminder, during the breaks between sessions, do visit our exhibition area by simply clicking on the exhibit room button at the bottom of your screen. You can interact by chatting or scheduling a call with our partners and come back to these live sessions by clicking on the live conference button at the bottom of your screen. We will now be back with you in a few